I think we should start to embrace failure and go, actually, I'm going to do this thing, and if it goes wrong, I'm going to fail. It's going to be all right. I'll just do it again. I'll try a different way. I'll learn something new. But it's a shift in our mindsets with that, and I think for many of us, probably, it's been ingrained in us, actually, that we need to succeed, we need to succeed, we need to succeed. Two of them are absolutely true, and one's a complete made up lie. So what I'd like to do is just test your abilities to assess someone that you've never really met before, and assess which you think are the two true things about me and which one's a lie. Is that alright? The first thing is that I used to be a professional footballer. That may or may not be true. So two are, I promise you that two are definitely, I know they all sound like lies, right? But two are definitely true and one's a complete made of lies. So I'd just like you to uh, have a little chat with the person next to you, see which one you think's the lie, and then I'll give you a chance to go with it. And please put your hand up if you think that I've never done cap yet. Can't lie. <laughs> That's disgraceful, appreciate yourself. I think you're the expert in this room on your life and your work and how you do stuff. So that's how I like to work. I like to throw things out, have a work with it, see where you get to, but you get to do the rest of the figuring out for yourself. And it can be a really little stretch, like butterflies in your stomach stuff, or it can be a really big stretch. But if you'd even consider doing it, that's your stretch zone. Don't look cool, don't look like you're not walking. Is that right? Uh, first one then, if you had to hold a tarantula spider, which zone would you be in? <laughs> Something like Britain's Got Talent or the X Pants on stage. I love the fact that you guys are creating a panic zone up there. It's like a panic room, isn't it? That's how they track me. That's what that is. It's a new track me. And the other thing is when you're in your comfort zone, Feel a bit, there's a little bit of smoothness going on, almost like, look at them over there, how pathetic. They're scared of spiders, or they're scared of this, or scared of that. And yet, we flip the scenario around, and suddenly you're in your panic zone, and they're in their comfort zone. I find this dead, dead interesting, this whole thing. And, and do you know, I find it interesting as well, working with kids. Because sometimes I think we don't see the world through their eyes, we don't see their comfort stretch and panic zones, we see ours. So often we go, what are you doing? It's not a big deal, we've got to do this thing. Because in our world, it ain't a big deal, it's comfort zone stuff. In their world, it's not panic zone stuff. And I'll tell you how I react when I'm in my panic zone. This is how I react. I get angry, I get cross, I get frustrated, I run away, I hide, I try and make myself invisible. I'll fight anyone who's trying to make me do the thing that I don't want to do. I'll feel ill, I'll feel nauseous, I'll... that's why I'm like in my panic zone. And I think everybody else is the same. It's just that our comfort stretching panic zones really differ. And when we work with kids, one of the things I don't think we always get right is understanding because each single kid has an individual comfort stretch and panic zone depending on their life experiences and what's happened to them. So sometimes we can go, what are you kicking off for? What are you making a big deal of it for? Why are you reacting like that? Well, they're only reacting exactly the same way I'm reacting when I'm in my panic zone. It's just that the thing they're reacting about is different. It's interesting, isn't it, when you start to see the world through someone else's eyes. And I'm not saying we should leave people there and say that's perfectly, it's perfectly fine for me to kick off. I'm not saying we should do that. I'm just trying to say sometimes that we don't understand it because we misinterpret the situation and the scenario that's going on for us. 
This is the difference. Self-esteem is an internal thing. It's the way you estimate yourself. It's how you feel about you. It's whether you love yourself or not. That's what self-esteem is. Confidence is in your ability to do an external thing. Over a long period of time, self-esteem can go up or come down, but it's much more of a slow burner. Confidence can change in an instance because the activity you're taking part in can change. I'll give you a really, a really daft example of this, but if I had to tie my shoelaces, I'd be fairly confident I can do that. My self-esteem would remain the same, but I'd be fairly confident I could tie my shoelaces. I'd probably be 10 out of 10 confidence, comfort zone, wouldn't even be thinking about it, I could just get on doing it. If I had to land an airplane, I reckon my confidence might be around 0 or 1 out of 10. Now my self-esteem has not changed in that moment. I still think I'm alright, but my level of confidence in my ability to do the activity I'm participating has changed massively. Does that make some sense? Do you see the difference in the two? Now self-esteem is linked to confidence, because people with high and healthy levels of self-esteem are more likely to step out of their comfort zone and take some risks and learn some new skills and grow some confidence in that area. But they're not one and the same thing. We see in our society really confident people that have really low self-esteem. We only need to look at the celebrity world to see hundreds of people in that position. They can perform in whatever their field is with the utmost confidence, but they don't really like themselves that much. Is that, you get where I'm going with it? We just need to try and make that distinction a little bit. One of the things that we often struggle with in life is this idea of risk. Uh, we certainly think that sometimes risk is like this real dangerous thing, this real, and I, I actually think risk should be part of our life and is part of our life. And I'm not talking about risks where we're going to take stupid risks, we're going to put ourselves in real danger or real difficult situations or things like that. I'm talking about thought through risk. I'm talking about things where we look at it and we think, do you know what, this could go wrong, I could fail. I think that should become part of our, our lives. And I think, and it's only my personal opinion, but I think one of the things that the way our education system is set up, one of the things it does to us, and I know people start to try and change this in recent years, but one of the things it does to us is it makes us adverse to failure. Because failure is not seen as a good thing. Certainly in the education system I grew up in, failure wasn't kind of a good thing at all. So what it led me to do was go and do the things that I knew I was going to be good at. So I only went and did the things I was fairly confident I was pretty good at. And I avoided doing stuff that I wasn't that good at because of what I was actually doing was avoiding failure. And I don't think that's a great thing. I think we should start to embrace failure and go, actually, I'm going to do this thing, and if it goes wrong, I'm going to fail. It's going to be all right. I'll just do it again. I'll try a different way. I'll learn something new. But it's a shift in our mindsets with that. And I think for many of us, probably, it's been ingrained in us, actually, that we need to succeed, we need to succeed, we need to succeed. What I want you to know is that when you were a little child, you had an absolutely unbelievable capacity to fail. Unbelievable capacity to fail. Toddlers learn to walk by falling over again and again and again and again. You reckon the average toddler, before it can walk across the room, falls over at least 1,000 times, gets up and goes again. Fails, 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 and just keeps going. None of you got on a bike, those of you can ride it and just rode off into the sunset. You got on it and you fell off it. You got on it and stabilised it. You got on it and you came off it again. Everything you've ever become a master of, everything you've ever become brilliant at, is littered with failure all over the place. So I just want to chuck that in. And I want you to know that deep down inside of you, that little toddler that still exists in you, still has a massive capacity to fail and keep going. The adult in you probably fails once and says, I'm rubbish at this, I'm never ever doing it again. But the toddler in you can fail and fail and fail again. And I really like that idea of tapping into that. I fail constantly. Every single day I reckon I fail. I mess up, I get something wrong. I do something that's not perfect. I reckon I fail all the time. But for me, it's learning to embrace that failure and just keep rolling with it. Because I'm just going to keep getting better. But I've got to keep challenging myself to step out of that comfort zone and fail. It's really, really all right in some ways. That risk is just part of it. Risking failure, risking showing yourself up. Risking losing face, risking being laughed at. I think it's alright. Give it a go because I think that's where life starts to get a bit exciting and a bit interesting. In your comfort zone, you're dead safe, but I reckon you're bored. I reckon you're really bored. <laughs> anyway, we'll keep going with it and working with it.
for the show and some good stuff happens. So thanks, I appreciate it. Thank you. You can tell it goes well though from just almost reaction and question. Well no, actually the opposite is you can you can tell when it's not going well. <laughs> <laughs> just getting some stuff smashed off my to-do list. And then I'm gonna go sit in there and do a bit of writing my books though. Just thought it's worth starting that journey, innit? Then everyone can see how uh, how productive I am when I'm trying to write a fucking book. <laughs> oh yeah, now he's here with camera. <laughs> Oh, she was yeah, like, yeah, like, Whereas you, you're like, we are going to get filmed? Where are we? Who moved? Two extra hours. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> That's the difference. So that email wasn't really aimed at you. Yeah. And everyone else. What I'll do in future is send you separate emails. Is that all right? Yeah. So I'll have fluid team, group, email, and then just for Alice emails. Oh, right, so I'm, go I'm going to write next door. Right. No, it's new, okay. mate. But obviously, only for the purposes of the camera and that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute class. She's just a genius. Absolute genius. Because it's just so simple, but brilliant. I know I can talk to people, but it's because I get there's instant feedback. Do you know, so you talk to somebody and you can kind of see whether you need to say a bit more, you need to say a bit less. Whereas with a book, you're writing it, and my constant question all the time is I'm writing this and I'm like, am I milking this point, or do I need to, am I repeating myself too much, or are people going, oh, tell me a bit more about that, I ain't quite got it. That's my struggle, all the time. Are you ready, Mike? I'm gonna start now. <laughs> There's, there's pressures upon me to, to write a positive spin on it, yeah. yeah. Um, which sometimes, it's an hard job, isn't it? It's not always going to be a positive spin. Yeah, I think all of them would relate to, if it wasn't just Key Stage 2. They would they relate to Key Stage 2 for Yeah, so we could get a child referred. Working on, so you might, you might under there, it might talk about relationships with peers, relationships with authority, relationships with... The school's buys it, and then they go, right, we need to prove this works, but actually, don't you get it? I don't know what time it is. Right, how are you? Tired. Tired. Oh. Oh. That's the kind of stuff you need, man. Yeah. <laughs> Start with, I've had so many lists back in terms of your hot, warm, cold lists. I've had some back from people. So straight away, actually, we're starting to just start to have a conversation and get more working. So, so basically, that the whole thing with that is anybody who's in leadership in any position or new to leadership or managing people or like an after school evening thing where parents could actually, um, yes, do some self esteem, identity, all of that work. <laughs> no, I am not. No, it was just a, it was an example. Lying. Like, <laughs> <lying. laughs> Cut that, Mike. Cut that. I, didn't, I don't lie. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. But that yeah. is sorting out. Yeah, it's alright. Okay, I'm gonna. It's fine. Take the hours and then you're moving. Will you just remind me? Right. Anyway. See you, mate. See you. Bye.